All right, we are back here at the Nordic EV Summit. And here at the Fortum stand, I have uh, Ole from Fortum. Uh, yes, uh, well, my name is Ole Guvran uh, Hempel. I'm uh, the business manager for public charging uh, for Fortum Charge and Drive in Norway, which means my responsibility is uh, all of the fast chargers, all of the public available chargers, the high power chargers, and also uh, the Norwegian side of uh, managing the project with this wireless fast charging for taxis in the city of Oslo. And you know, the problem with uh, we, today we'll talk about wireless charging because you see, the problem with the wireless charging is that it's too slow, uh, it's too inefficient, uh, too expensive, and too impractical. You have to be right on the spot there, uh, something. So you are the expert here. So maybe you can uh, crush some myth today. Yeah, I will try to crush some of these myths. But uh, just a little disclaimer: I'm not an electro electro engineer like my uh, colleague Morgan that was on the video yesterday. Uh, but uh, I have some insight into the project that uh, I hope we will bust some myths. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you tell me more about this project with the taxis? Uh? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, uh, we are doing a project for the city of Oslo um, uh, with regards to wireless fast charging of taxis. Uh, it is. Uh, um, we're going to build wireless fast chargers at uh, taxi stands, so where the taxis are waiting for customers. They are doing this today. And uh, the background is, uh, why are we doing, why are we applying this very advanced and, 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 uh, and uh, unproven technology in this, in this setting? It's not unproven technology, but for taxis it is. It's the world's first, actually. Um, why are we doing this? And the reason is that uh, the city of Oslo are very ambitious in their emission targets, re uh, reducing their emissions and uh, we want to help them on that and one business uh, one sector which is lagging really in adoption of EVs and, and low emission or no emission emission free vehicles is the taxi business and the reason for that is that taxis see charging as an issue now you and me which are per you know you drive around you charge you stop and have a bite to eat and it's it's kind of a normal thing but for taxi drivers this they only stop to fuel uh, and they stop for five minutes and the, their shift continues. And uh, so stopping up and charging and using that shift time, that taxi shift time to charge, that is losing money. So it's going to hurt them financially. So that is why the adoption of taxis in, in Oslo over to uh, EVs is very, very slow. I don't know the percentage right now, but it's way below the Oslo average and even national average of EV adoption. Um, so we want to so they say the taxi drivers see the uh, uh, conversion to EV as a barrier. This charging is a barrier with a plug. And we want to lower that bar for adop adoption. We want to make it so much easier for the taxi drivers to, to charge and use EVs uh, uh, so that it's practic practical, in practical senses, they're not going to do anything else that they do today and at the same time drive EVs. So, uh, so the problem is they need to unplug and plug in or whatever. So that, that's the whole point with the wireless charging, right? Mm. They, can, they can charge without leaving the car. Mm. Uh, but where do they charge then? They charge on the taxi stand. So they drive uh, normal taxis in Oslo, they drive to a taxi stand where there are other taxis and customers, uh, taxi customers can come and, and grab a cab. And you have to grab a cab in the front of the line and then the other taxis kind of drive, follow the line, so to say. Um, so uh, we want to charge those taxis while they are waiting for their new customers in that line. So putting up chargers in the line, in the ground, under the charger, uh, under the car while it is waiting. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, so the way I understand it, it uh, it's like a moving line, uh, first in, first out <laughs> yeah. queue, right? Eh? Yeah. And uh, so that's okay. So they charge in the queue. Well, or when, but they have to be over that plate or whatever. Yep. Uh, and then, do they? I mean, do they have to do anything to start and stop? Uh, the charging? Yeah, well, th this is uh, this is what we are focused on. So we want to enable um, this technology to make the user experience for the taxi drivers as smooth as possible. And in what we are uh, aiming at is to develop that. Uh, um, you're talking a lot about when you plug into a charger, there's some handshake going on. The, the charger says ticky tick, ticky tock, ticky tick, ticky tock, and then suddenly then the charging starts ramping up. Now there's a lot of technical requirements going on there. But the 
the galvanic isolation, the communication, the authentication of the user, so we know who, who is the customer, that they are allowed to charge and everything. In this wireless charging project, that authentication first, uh, will happen wirelessly on a near-field communication uh, technology. So while you're, I think it's uh, when they are 15 meters away from the charger, the car it, uh, will have installed wireless technology, so it auth authenticates itself, I am in a charging zone, who are you? Yes, you are. Handshake goes on. That happens before you uh, you are over the charger. Before, before you are over the charger. Okay. So when you are over the charger, all that things are, are done. All that kind of administrating and the safety aspect is, is done. Also, the the galvanic isolation is not. Um, is, is actually non-existent in, in wireless uh, technology because the air itself is the isolator, the air gap. Oh, yeah, okay. so you don't need to isolate it. So all you have to do is just line up yep. on the spot yep. and then it just starts. So how long does it... Actually, well, what we're aiming for is that uh, you have to align over the... I will show some slides later in... Uh, yeah, but uh, you have to... Yeah, you have to align over the the charger. the The, the car will have installed a, a own screen. We we ho we're hoping to to aiming for uh, uh, integrating this alignment screen uh, into the car's own uh, navigational screen. Okay. That that kind of pops up when you are authenticated or something. But once you, you see you use this, uh, if this is not uh, uh, if this is not possible, we will just use um, a, a secondary screen. We will install that into the taxi. So the driver we will see okay I am now I am aligned and it will press park and when you press park the charging starts very instantaneously I'm talking below one second Whoa. yes okay. so uh, zero point something seconds and the charging st starts but of course the car itself as always is in control of the charging how many amps is it asking for and as you have demonstrated many times Bjorn it's like ramping slowly up Yep. And, and then it reaches a peak and then it controls, it goes down if the battery is too hot. Yeah, rapid gate, cold gate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these things will happen of, uh, here also because uh, it is the car's battery management system always in charge. It is monitoring the car's battery yep. and then allowing how many amps it will receive of charging. So the car itself will think that you're plugged into a Shademo or CC oh. contact. Yeah, it will, we will kind of trick the car. Wait, so it's actually DC. Charge. It, yes. I mean, but okay, so in the past I've seen that these, these wireless toys, they charge at 7.4 kilowatts, which doesn't really cut it. No. So how fast are we talking about here? We're talking about 75 kilowatts of charging. Um, 75? 75 kilowatts. <laughs> and uh, what is uh, genius about this system is uh, that this one receiver plate can transfer 75 kilowatts. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you have a larger vehicle, you can just add plates. So if you have, uh, if you have four plates, uh, receiver plates, uh, then you can have 300 kilowatts. And this is uh, applicable for buses and heavy vehicles, uh, but not for taxis. Of course, we think that seven, for the pilot project that 75 kilowatts is enough. 75 is enough for most, uh, okay. Yeah. But, the, uh, but with 75 kilowatts, you must have massive heat loss, energy loss. Well, that has uh, always been the issue about wireless charging. That uh, uh, There's two, uh, two big issues with wireless charging uh, uh, historically. One is the efficiency loss, but that is also connected with um, electromagnetic radiation. So if you have a lot of electromagnetic ra radiation when you are conducting this, uh, this wireless charging, uh, or transfer of energy really, um, then, there, uh, then you are losing energy out of, uh, in the air, basically. So then you get the radiation from uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. Now, the company we are working with, which is a world-leading American company called Momentum Dynamics, which has developed this uh, fast wireless charging themselves in-house. Uh, this, uh, they have the, it's more like a laser beam. Okay. Because uh, it, it's not like uh, emitting uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, energy uh, or radiation. Oh, it's because, more focused. Yes, it is very, very focused. Actually, the efficiency of transferring energy on this, because that is uh, a point, uh, the efficiency is higher than using a cable. So if you, you are fast charging on a 50 kilowatt charger, ABB or tritium or whatever, your, if, uh, your energy efficiency loss isn't about your energy efficiency 
efficiency about 93%. Okay, now, you, you and me, we don't really notice this, but it's from this, this loss is actually uh, the charge point operator's loss. Oh, yeah. Because we take, we take 100 kilowatt hours from the grid and we deliver only 93. But on the wireless uh, technology, we deliver 96. So it's actually Whoa. higher, it's 96%. Whoa, that's way higher. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, okay, wow, but, but you never mentioned that 50 kilowatt, but you know, <laughs> we talk about this, these water-cooled cables, and they are water-cooled because they, they create lots of heat. So what about, uh, you know, uh, 100 kilowatt uh, yeah. cables? I mean, is the, is the efficiency even lower than 93? Uh, I really don't know, actually, but, uh, uh, you know, thinking practically, well, the, the, the energy efficiency, the loss of energy on transferring um, on a high power charger where you have to cool the cable, yeah. obviously, because there's some of that energy, more of that energy is going to transfer into heat instead of energy into the battery. And you have to cool that down. And also you have to use the energy on cooling the batteries or cooling the, the cable. Oh, yeah. yeah. But not that's very, very little energy. Uh, I think the chiller on a hypercharge is about 500 watts, so it's very little. But um, yeah, but anyways, it's, uh, it's uh, when you're talking about, if we look a little bit into the future, Bjorn, about not like the Tesla Semi, yeah. uh, like big, heavy semi trucks driving maybe 1,000 kilometers per day. They have a eight, nine hundred kilowatt hour battery, and but they have to they have to rest, they have to sleep, they park at some places, and they need to slow charge over the night while they sleep for eight hours at maybe 150 or 300 kilowatts, you know, of effect. Now imagine having 10 or 20 of these tra trailers lined up. Yeah. Imagine all of those trailers having cables, 350 kilowatt cables, yes. and with an efficiency loss of, let's say, 10%. Oh. That's going to amount into a lot of energy loss. But And, of course, the, the practicality of having cables and big semis. Uh, and especially, around. and in winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah cables winter. freeze and all that. And that's another thing about wireless technology. It transfers through everything that's not elect uh, that not magnetically uh, um, uh, affectable. So, for example, as water, ice, rocks, sticks, toys, even living organisms can be between the connector, uh, the receiver plate, and the transfer plate. Uh, but of course, it's not it's not good to have living things in, uh, between there. Oh, the only right. I, I don't know. I don't think it's very very safe. Uh, okay. Yeah, so there will be uh, safety systems, uh, especially for, uh, there will be a um, uh, foreign uh, magnetic object detection system. Okay. So if, you, if you're charging in this pilot project, when the taxi is charging, somebody throws a beer can, an aluminum beer can. Okay. I don't know how uh, magnetic uh, that, that is, but yeah. if you throw something with metal in between, uh, the foreign uh, magnetic uh, metallic object detection system will detect that and cut charging. What about if a rat comes under the car? Yeah, there, uh, we have looked at this living object detection, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, or, or organic, but it's a longer route actually, and the air gap isn't that big, and oh, okay. what is the real risk? Uh, I mean, if you're having this at home, maybe the cat would prefer to sit there because <laughs> it's warmer, <laughs> I don't know, okay. but, uh, but uh, so we're not really looking into the living object detection, okay. because these are busy places, mm -hmm. and as you see from the slide here, that yeah. it will be in uh, Oslo S, the central station of Oslo, it's probably the largest taxi stand in the city, very, very busy and uh, also in Skøyen which is on the west side of the city and in Nydalen on the northern part. Nydalen is for Oslo that's kind of the tech part of the city so a lot of taxis go up there and wait for customers to go down to the city again. But so okay very, I mean this sounds wonderful this technology but uh, how I mean are you going to retrofit some hardware into the cars? So which cars can get this? Actually, all cars can get this. So for this pilot project, there are no cars that you can uh, tick a box. Oh, I'm going to order a, a, a Nissan ENV 200 Evalia, and I want to tick off. I want an additional 75 kilowatt uh, receiver plate. Okay. You cannot do that because Nissan doesn't produce this. Okay. It's not an option. So we have to retrofit this right. charger plate, and we have to integrate it into the car's charging system, integrate it into the battery management system. So the battery management system is in control and everything. And uh, 
so all of these cars will be retrofitted. But for answering your question, all cars, Teslas, Nissans, even Renaults always, all of them can, can just be retrofitted. Well, but what about warranty if you start messing around with it? That is a, that is a big issue and that is maybe the critical issue for this project and uh, the reason why we are inviting in other OEMs to discuss these things. And the critical issue, Bjorn, is that we are making, we're doing serious uh, amendments to the charging system of the car. And, for the, and that's, and, and, and if it, all things being equal, that will cancel out the OEM or the car manufacturer's guarantee on the, on the vehicle. So then you, you lose your guarantee because you, you, you did too much to the car. Uh, that being said, um, uh, we would like uh, for taxi drivers, it's very important that they have a guarantee on the car. Yeah, yeah. Now they're not asking for special taxi warranties. I know that a lot of taxi companies are uh, not, uh, they're negotiating up from a normal five year warranty to, to maybe eight or 10 years, I don't know. But, but uh, we're talking about normal standard warranties. I don't know what the, on the Nissan is five years. Uh, or eight years on the battery and stuff like that, that they, they will still be valid even though we do these amendments. And we're talking about not many cars. For the pilot project, it's about uh, three to four chargers per site and three sites. So we're, we're aiming at 24, 24, 25 cars, between 20 and 30 cars. Uh, we don't want a one-to-one -one relationship between chargers and cars because that will be too exclusive. We want to have them fighting a little bit yeah. Yeah, to getting utilization up and everything. Um, and then, what, I mean, how big is this hardware? Because 75 uh, kilowatt must be ginormous. Yeah. How heavy and how... how... Well, uh, that was one question I also had, because I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm thinking rectifier, that's a big thing. If you want to rectify more power, it's going to be heavy, it's going to be big, so it's going to weigh down the vehicle and everything. <laughs> but uh, actually, the thing is, Bjorn, is uh, uh, the, the frequency on the AC power, uh, because this wireless transfer technology is transferring AC from the grid to AC to the car. And, uh, and uh, so we have to rectify it in the car to, before it goes directly into the battery. But uh, to do this wireless transfer, you have to pump up the, the hertz uh, on, the, on the frequency on, uh, on the AC side before it goes into the transmitter. So that is actually the hardware. And you can see on the picture here, you see those big gray boxes. That, those are frequency converters for AC, AC frequency converters. So normal grid power is 50, 60 hertz. But here we're talking about uh, above 80. 80,000 hertz, 80 kilohertz of uh, AC power. Now, one, what happens with rectifying on the car when you have 85 or about 82,000 hertz AC power is the rectifying equipment goes from weighing 200 kilos to weighing one kilo. So it's one very, kilo. yes, yeah, very, very small. I didn't, I had to get my head around this, but it's actually true that if you have a, when you pump up the, the frequency, all this kind of rectifying equipment just goes down uh, in size and weight and everything. So it's actually, that's, that's a key enabler. I mean, I can see this in the future that every car has it. And then, uh, uh, I mean, for normal, I mean, regular cars, right? Uh, not taxis, and then you also have it in parking lots, mm. and you can just you don't have to plug in yeah. because that's actually a very it's even more user friendly than plug and charge. This is uh, beyond plug and charge. Plug and charge, as you probably know, but maybe for the viewers, is that you just plug in and the charger and the car talk together automatically. You're authenticated, and it just starts charging. So no RFID, no app. Like Tesla. Right? Yeah, like Tesla has yeah. done yeah. since 2012. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, wireless charging is even more user friendly because you just park. You don't plug in. Yeah. Yeah. So for AC charging or like what we call AC charging, lower effect charging maybe 10 or 11 kilowatts or something like that for you know staying there for a few hours uh, this technology is also very viable but of course people won't rebuild retrofit their cars for with equipment costing about seven and a half thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars yeah it is it is expensive today that is why also the Norwegian uh, state subsidy government and Nova is involved in the project to, to subsidize it but most of the costs are, are taken by the, by the by the city of Oslo because they want to make they want to start somewhere to make this change. Well, I think it sounds really promising. Uh, I think we have to wrap up soon. Uh, it's getting very long, but very interesting uh, topic. So what I like about this is that you don't have to plug in. I mean, okay, it's really easy to plug in, but um, I live in Norway. We have winter, snow, ice, slush, and we get problems with every car, not just Tesla, 
uh, people with Hyundai Konas have get have problem with the charge port, and and snow gets stuck, snow uh, melts and freezes. So without without cable, I mean, this sounds sounds like this is the this is the future. Yeah, well, the, f the future is that uh, when you order a new EV, you can add this as the extra equipment. Do you, do you want when you buy the car? Okay, but in the future, yeah, the cable charging would be the extra equipment. Maybe. And the wireless would be the standard. standard yeah. <laughs> Depends on what infrastructure is there, because of course you need to rebuild the infrastructure. So this is just a transferring technology, going from cable to wireless. But it requires something on the car side. And that's if we were to be switching uh, connector technology, uh, suddenly a new connector would uh, be implemented. We had to do something on the charger side also, if the OEMs started producing new vehicles with this. Um, so, but first steps first, and this is the best place to test it the taxis uh, and uh, because it's so user friendly and we get this heavy um, we get the big uh, uh, big effect on local emissions uh, and uh, getting lowering the bar for for taxi drivers and remember Bjorn that this isn't this isn't just an Oslo problem this is a global problem oh, yeah. now I'm sure that there's a lot of taxi drivers in China and the US haven't even heard about EVs but if they hear about EVs they're gonna start thinking about how they're gonna charge that car and if they get this super user-friendly oh okay so I don't have to do anything else what I'm already doing that's fine actually some of the taxi drivers told us that actually this would give me more time on the road because I don't have to stop the fuel uh, fossil fuels I can just drive and drive and drive or taxis are driving in 24-hour shifts just change their driver and then off they go because they will com uh, continuously be charging at these as long as they stop by some of these three locations that will happen so these are the experiences and also another factor that we want to have more uh, a big point is that you don't need that big battery. Okay. A taxi that can drive, you know, several hundreds of kilometers every day in the route doesn't need that big of a battery because it's it's a, it's charging all the time. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, that's great. Um, I'm I'm eager to test it out and to make a video, follow up video about this. So uh, uh, when uh, roughly when will it, this will be in production? And yeah, we're planning to build this this year, so after the summer. Uh -huh. Yeah, but we are. Uh, there are some uh, some risks on that timeline. One is the well, how fast can we get the power okay. from the grid operator? Now this is normal for us when we build fast chargers. Sometimes we will have to wait yeah. for some months for that. Uh, which delays projects, but the big risk really is uh, getting uh, the OEMs, the car manufacturers, to say that we are in, in we are in this project, okay. and we're saying guarantee will be fine. Oh. Then they will be the first. So, for if you're OEM and watching this, yeah. uh, you have to consider: Do you want uh, Nissan Leaf or the Hyundai Kuma or? the Jaguar I pays to be the first wirelessly uh, fast charging taxi in the world because this is a world leading project. Well, okay, so uh, hopefully within this year I'll come out with a follow up video <laughs> about this. So, um, well, I think uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for the insight. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. So, if you have more questions, please comment below and then we can either answer them there or make a follow up video. So I think that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys later.